Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that dislike me, yes, I just want you to understand that <laughs> um, there's no reason to dislike me as long as you do what the law says. <laughs> now, let's say you're governor. Ouch. And you like to do what is fraudulent. <laughs> and I'm I'm a friend. I'm a whistleblower. I'm an informer. Mm -hmm. And I have the right to investigate you anytime I sue you for any other crimes that you might have been covering up. As long as every oath of office in the United States does what is within the confines of law, they would like me because everybody's going to do the same thing. <laughs> now, the False Claims Act or other reward statutes, that means that there's more than one reward statute? Yeah. Why don't you get me all of them? <laughs> uh, uh, can't you hide my identity? <laughs> you know, if the sheriff and the police department had taken me seriously, yes, when I informed them on November 20th of 2015 of the fraud, yeah, they probably could have hid my identity, and they can do this for approximately 60 days. Mm -hmm. But this district cases of retaliation yeah, where you make up crimes where I wasn't in Brennan or I wasn't in Swim. Yeah. I provide the evidence of your fraud. Yeah. And then you say you're going to say that I'm crazy. I have a, a very good feeling that there are federal and state employees that have knowledge of this. Now, um, Relators Council have tried various tactics to shield their clients' identities from the eyes of public access to court electronic records. The PACER system? <laughs> Why don't we go through that and find out who it is that wanted to shield? Yes, because I'd like to know every IP address that has accessed PACER for the last, oh, 30 years. <laughs> now, let's say... Oh, uh, efforts have included uh, using pseudonyms such as John Doe, yes. Requesting redaction or permanent seals, yes. Informing organizations uh, to to keep the relatives' identities hidden, mm -hmm. all have met with limited uh, success, yeah. As if you had to know who it was that was going to have you put in prison. Now, um... These different ways, all right, just get me the pacer. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how many federal state employees do understand that it's probably such that I'm not going to be able to keep my identity hidden. Yes, as in there is something about the public having the right to know those that get sued. Yes, I found this very, very interesting. The filing under seal. Yes. But then there is this public knowledge, right? The False Claims Act imposes civil liability on any person, including a corporation, who knowingly uses a false record or statement mm -hmm, to get a false or fraudulent claim paid or approved by the government. Now we could use the false criminal complaints, yes, so that the Western State Hospital would get paid. One example. <laughs> And any person who conspires, oh, no problem, mm -hmm. to defraud the government by getting a false or fraudulent claim paid? Yes. Let's say the public defender service. Pooch, uh, these are all government uh, claims. Yes. Child support. Yes. Without any due process, without reciprocity. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I put verified in the draft there. Yes. Now, uh, I like this, uh, the treble damages and civil penalties up to $21,562.80 per occurrence. <laughs> now, uh, the QTAM provisions allows a private person known as an American citizen, uh, known as a realtor, a realtor, uh huh, to bring an action on behalf of the United States of America. <laughs> For violation of FCA and successful relatives may receive a reward up to 30% of the proceeds plus reimbursement. Yes. For my attorney fees. Yes. My costs and the expenses. Now, these QTAM actions are filed under seal and must remain so for at least 60 days, unlike a regular lawsuit where I sue you as a citizen. Yeah. 
QTAM action is not served on the defendant. Let's say Jefferson County doesn't get served. Ooh. Collin County doesn't get served. Oh. State of Washington. Ooch. Each and every state. <laughs> now, rather than the complaint and document known as a relator statement are served in the U.S. Department of Justice. <laughs> But it's kind of nice that the Department of Justice has the availability of deciding that they don't want to pursue these things. <laughs> now, uh, this uh, served uh, un uh, unaware of the action, uh, known only to the court and the DOJ. Mm -hmm. Now, in practice, the Department of Justice that I've emailed tens of thousands of times, yeah, they make their intervention decision within the statutory 60 days instead um Seeking consent to extend the seal mm -hmm. increments of three to six months. Now, my thought was, let's not extend it. Pooch. In fact, let me sue all of those in the DOJ right now. I've emailed them tens of thousands of emails of fraud. Yes. Forgery. Ooch. Uh, perjury. Yes. Misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. uh, malicious court hearings, vexatious court proceedings, poop, bribery, ooch, corruption, yes, kidnapping, ooh. Now, once the DOJ completes its investigation, I think it should take them maybe five or six days <laughs> because I'm going to actually ask the DOJ to not, not want to have to do this considering whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, unlike a regular lawsuit, a QTAM action is not, ooh, Oh, 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 then investigate so on and so forth, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the lead counsel, it can decline intervention, but allow the relator to proceed. I'm thinking they're going to do that. <laughs> and then I'm going to employ my own legal counsel to act as representing myself. Yes, the informant, the whistleblower, the friend of the United States. I am.